Hey everybody, this is Josh back again with the Devon Brothers. Um, today we're going to tie a really popular dry fly that I've put my own little twist on. Um, this is a kind of a wolf style Adams. I use a lot of different kinds of deer hair on it. Um, it works really well for me. So the hook I'm going to tie it on is a size 12 U001. Um, this hook has a barb on it. A lot of people don't like to tie flies with barbed hooks. Um, my dry flies, I do, because then I can tie a nymph off the back of them. It makes things a lot easier. Um, don't have to worry about it slipping off and losing your fly. The thread that I'm going to use is a Danville 7 in in red. I like a nice little hot spot at the eye of the fly. The dubbing for the body is some natural muskrat. Um, this dubbing has a lot of like the really long, fine guard hairs in it. And sometimes I'll pick those out, sometimes I don't. Um, sometimes I'll trim them, just kind of whatever whatever suits you. Um, and then the two different kinds of deer hair that I'm gonna use on this fly are Comparadon deer hair and then Stimulator deer hair. And I'll talk a little bit more about why I use two different kinds when I'm using them. Um, and then in classic Adam's form, I'm gonna use a grizzly hackle and a brown hackle tied in together for the hackle on the fly. So let's go ahead and get started. Get my hook in the vise, ready to rock and roll. And I like to start my thread about an eye length behind the eye, just so I don't rush the eye or crowd it or anything like that. I'll trim that off. And then I'll wrap all the way back to where the hook starts to bend down. That's where I'm gonna tie my tail in. And the tail on the fly is gonna be the stimulator deer hair. I'm just gonna cut like 12 or 15 hairs off of here. If you count, you're a loser. So I got like that many hairs. And the reason I use the stimulator hair on this one for the tail is it doesn't flare as much. So I don't have to worry about like hairs going all over the place. Um, these just kind of lay down flat and I'm not even gonna worry about stacking them because they come out, especially if you're only using this few hairs, they come out pretty straight. So what I'm going to do is start those, and I'm going to make really, really loose thread wraps all the way up to kind of where I want my body to end. Make sure that that hair kind of stays on top of the hook as best I can, which I'm having a little bit of trouble with. Let some thread out of the bobbin, and just keep wrapping that thread forward to kind of where I want my body to end. I'll make like two or three real tight wraps, and you can see that the end of that hair flares quite a bit. But if I come down here to where my tail tips are at and really crank down, they flare like a little bit, but not too much. So I'll just pull my hair up tight, trim it off kind of close. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm gonna go over quite a few thread wraps. And then the next step on the fly is gonna be the wing, which is kind of a wolf style, kind of comparadon. Um, I don't split it, so I guess you could call it more comparadon. But the Comparadon hair flares a whole lot more than the Stimulator hair does. And so I've already got some stacked up. It's about a pencil length, or a pencil diameter, since that's the unit of measure we decided to use for deer hair. Um, and so I've got that all stacked up here nice and neat. You can see I've got it here. I'm going to tie the wing in about the length of the hook. I'm going to do that about a quarter of the way down the shank. I'm just going to set it on top, get my bobbin, nice counterclockwise turn, make two thread wraps, and I probably all fingers here, so it's probably hard to see. I'll make two thread wraps, pull it tight, make another two, pull it tight again, and then what I'll do is pull this hair up, and I've found that you can get a lot closer when you cut it if you do it in sections instead of trying to get it all in one big chop. So I'll come through here and cut little bits out until I get it all cut loose and I've still got a few stragglers left there so I'll pull those back trim them out and then you can see we've got like a nice kind of flared compared on wing and I'll pull that all on top of the hook and then make a couple thread wraps in front pull it tight I actually got another hair down here trim that one out and then I'll lay all that hair forward again wrap back through all my butts 
and then wrap down to the tail, and then we'll start working on the body of the fly. So I'll pull out some of that muskrat dubbing. And the synthetic Adams Gray works really well too. I just like using muskrat, it's a little bit more classy on an old fly like this. So I'll make a pretty decent dubbing rope on this one. And I'm not pulling the guard hairs out on this, but if I wrap some, and I can like tell them that they're there, then I'll probably trim them out. So I'll get a pretty good looking noodle there. And another way I can keep that tail kind of clumped together is if I make a loose dubbing wrap over it, kind of pulls that hair together. And then I'll just work my way up, giving it a little bit of a taper. I got a little, little dog leg right there. Wrap that back up. And then that's about where I want to stop. So what I'll do here is I'll wrap over some of that deer hair butt stuff going on here. Got a little crazy there. Kind of level that out. Um, makes my hackle way a little easier. And then I'll come up front and build a bit of a thread ramp here, stand that hair up, and un again, give my hackle somewhere flat to lay out on. And then I'll push it all forward again and the biggest thing with tying in the hackle and stuff on this fly is keeping that hair out of your way so you don't get it mixed up in your hackle. And so I've got my two hackle feathers and what I've done is I've peeled off a few fibers from the stem on both of them. You can see that. And I'll just lay one right on top of the, the other one so they're both facing the same direction. And I'll line those tips up them in and I want the cups on the feathers or the way that the they kind of naturally sit to be facing me and so that way when I start wrapping the feather will kind of point down this direction if that makes any sense and then pull my hair forward again and I'll start wrapping that hackle and when you wrap the two hackles together like this you get like a really really nice dense hackle and I can actually use the hackle to stand that wing up real nice. And I just make one more turn in front of the wing. And then to make sure that I have plenty of room behind the eye, I'll go ahead and tie that off. Pull everything out of the way. Sweep everything back. Kind of. i got some that don't want to cooperate there, but that's okay. We can trim those out. I'll trim my hackle stems out. Trim these little crazy guys here and then you can see that's like a really really dense hackle that fly will float like crazy um, if you've watched our pheasant tail video I tie it really heavy this fly will actually float that super well I'll just do a four turn whip finish up at the head and there you can see since I left that space behind the eye of the hook I've got plenty of room up here there's nothing in that eye it's wide open so I don't have any problem getting tippet in or anything like that Thanks for watching, guys.